Thank. Gonna stick around, apparently. Mm, I don't know about that. Maybe Cannon just wanted to harass him and push him out of lane, but... Ooh! <laughs> oh, they're just missing from Gangplank. Hopefully cool by mid, then. Of course, Gank here from mid. Ram is going crazy with the ganks. Diving all the way down. Lord Fabulous is actually going to pick him up there with his... Uh, oh, man. Malefic Visions. Oh, I totally said something totally inappropriate almost there. Anyway. Uh, they're going to catch Ramus with the CV, but uh, no luck there. Listen coming into Malzahar, but Malzahar's going to dodge the skill shot, no problem, and just continue with the beatdowns. Throwing out some spells, pushing the lane. Being Malzahar, Malzahar generally good at being Malzahar, so good stuff. He's going for Catalyst, though. I really like that. There's some good burst here between uh, Vayne, Lee Sin, and Cannon, um, especially early game. And Ezreal definitely going to try and poke you down. Oh, Ezreal, of course, as well. Definitely going to try and poke you down. So I like the Catalyst. They're probably building through Rod of Aiders, or even Banshee's Veil if he needs to. But definitely again coming out here on top as well. And see what happens. Uh, Kenan looks like he saw that one though. Ooh, nice flash there to get away from the taunt. But uh, it is a flash ban for both sides of top, so the next gank from either team uh, should be highly successful. Looks like Ping's going down a bot there. They're expecting the other gank. This gank's awesome. <laughs> um, Caitlyn is going back. She's out of mana. She's <coughs> probably going to go do some shopping as well. We'll see what she gets. Uh, ooh, Bloodthirster and Boots 1. I like it. 15 minute Bloodthirster. That's that's some timing right there. You definitely, if you can ever get your Bloodthirster for 15 minutes, you've done. Uh, tw 20 minutes. 15 minutes is awesome. Before 20 minutes is really good. Uh, Caitlyn looks like she's 113 CS. She's actually up on Vayne by quite a lot. He's last hitting uh, almost... She's actually more than 30 CS behind. 32 to be exact at this, at this moment in time. She will catch up a bit here, though. So Vayne, um, I don't know if it's the aggression in the lane. That probably helps, but uh, it might just be a, a, a skill differential between the players. But Caitlyn definitely last hitting better than Vayne at the moment. And uh, that's going to be really nice. Again, that Bloodthirster. I mean, this vein's gone Wriggles, which is a much slower build. I mean, it has a similar effect to the Bloodthirster, that it helps keep you alive and gives you sustain throughout fights, but it does nowhere near the amount of damage. And even the small amount of armor you get from Wriggles is not going to help Vayne in this situation. So, Caitlyn definitely doing a great job there, farming up. And uh, farming up and getting the early Bloodthirster. And again, she's about 30 CS up, which is a lot. That's more than a champion kill. So, um, Ramus here coming down for another gank. Looks like Tarek's going to look for a stun. Powerball coming in too. He's actually going to hit a minion. Ooh, nice game down there from Vayne to keep Ramus away. And people keep dying. It was Lee Sin killing Gangplank. Sorry, I missed that gank, guys. There are too many ganks in this game. But as I said, the next gank at top was probably going to be successful for the team. And it uh, looks like Lee Sin figured that out. And he started to gank Gangplank before his flash came back up. I'm sure there are oranges involved, but uh, that wasn't enough. Listen, pretty good at chasing people. Um, it's kind of why he's a top pick. Rams, of course, uh, teleported back immediately after the failed gank, and he's. He looked like. Oh, it looks like he was going to try and uh, take top, but uh, I think. Oh no, he's still going to try and take top. Never mind. Back in bot, Caitlyn and Tarek now definitely are abusing their, the advantage they have here. Tarek's actually gone back. He's gonna gone ahead and bought a uh, philosopher stone and a. Uh, Ruby Crystal, which is going to build in the Heart of Gold, most abs most definitely. Supports, of course, um, tend to get almost 0 CS, or close close to thereabout. 0 CS is uh, considered perfect <laughs> for a support, which is quite impossible, really, given that your carry tends to go back. Anyway. But yeah, um, of course, when you don't have CS, but you need to buy wards, and you know you want items so you're not completely useless, um, gold items generate gold automatically for you, so these gold per, gold per, gold per 10 items. Very common. Lee Sin here coming for a gank as well. Um, Tarek probably got the gold quints as well, potentially as well. They're really, really powerful. Um, even though it's only 3 gold per 10, that adds up to quite a lot of gold. And again, um, given that you have no real income of your own with, without, fa with, without farm. Caitlyn okay, here getting aggressive on a vein, of course. Every headshot, every uh, every shot's going to do tons of damage, and every headshot's going to just really sting at this point. I mean, if, and she crits as well, it's going to be obscene. Uh, Caitlyn definitely gets the most damage out of having AD and crit, because whenever a headshot crits, it does obscene amounts of damage. I think I've headshot for about 700 to 800 damage. I was on Dominion, but you know, it was still awesome. <laughs> Dominion, of course, if you guys haven't played it, you should check it out. But we're here on Summoner's Rift, because who gives a crap about Dominion? At least in the competitive sense. Sorry, I might be trolling everyone. <laughs> Listen, of course, back in mid, saving me from the awkward moment of not being able to cast anything. <laughs> I was looking here to stand here in mid, but of uh Carnage doing a really nice job of warding the correct side of the brush every time Lucian tries to gank. Last time we tried to gank they had the other side of the brush warded and this time they had they had uh, the the other side, so nice job there. They're gonna catch Lucian coming down as well, of course, with the ward in front of Dragon. Dragon should be up in a minute or so, so we'll look, we'll look for that to be contested again. Lee Sin here, maybe going to jump in? No. So he's nowhere to get out. He's going to just eat some traps as he tries to get out. It oh, looks like bottom lane is missing, potentially. They can't actually see anything. But, um, again. And Ramus, of course, coming in for another gank on mid. All these things are time missing. I apologize, friends. Let's talk about CS again, right? <laughs> Lee Sin, of course, coming back. Jesus! Lee Sin, of course, coming back for a... Uh, for more damage, but Malzahar gonna spawn him as well. 
and I'm just gonna gonna deal some. I actually got blue buff there. I think you got it off Ezreal. Uh, in which case, that's really bad <laughs> for Vendetta because uh, blue buff Malzahar is, is super awesome. He's just gonna push all day, and again, he's just pushing down, uh, pushing down this tower, doing a really nice job there. I don't know what skin that is either. It's a cool skin. It might be Prince Malzahar. Anyway. Not relevant. Oh, really nice there into Vayne. Oh, headshot coming off. Oh, nice stun ult there to save her just in time. Tarek's new ult Radiance coming out there as well. Dealing, dealing a bit of burst damage and giving a bit more uh, attack damage and ability power. But uh, incredible sonar ult actually. Pretty much getting both of them in max range at the perfect time to, uh, to protect Vayne there from what was the most certain death. I mean, I think if Caitlyn had headshotted at any point in there. That might have been a kill. Ramus, of course, finding Lee Sin here, being really aggressive. This is a game certainly with two very aggressive junglers. I think it's why we've seen so many ganks. Ramus, I think, found Ezreal. And I, uh, he's got red buff as well, but he's going to give it up. He's going to actually start dragon, which is really nice. So, uh, the last dragon, of course. Ooh, nice job there. Carnage actually picking up bottom turret, pushing the lane forward, and they're going to go help Ramesu dragon. So, really nice dragon control from Carnage. I mean, it's reasonally even at 6 to kills. Looks like uh, Cannon's actually going to make make work of Gangplank again. Although, Gangplank does have a. He's got a Philo Stone building up to a Trinity Force now with cooldown boots. So, I'm um, just got a bit of regeneration, a bit of sustain, but not too much. Uh, Kennen, of course, mainly going for Will of the Ancients. That's a really interesting build, but that's probably the only way Kennen's viable on top is if you have Spell Vamp. Now, Zahara again with his blue buff, pushing down, pushing down mid really nicely and uh, managing to pick up the turret. And Dragon again being picked up by a Carnage. So, really nice job. They've definitely got Dragon control in this game, which is something that there's Lee Sin chilling at Dragon. <laughs> Double CVs dueling there. Yeah, that's something that uh, Vendetta have not had this game. The first dragon was uh, really nicely done there by Carnage, who picked it up knowing that their opponents were likely scared and wouldn't come after them. And that they've had it on timer ever since, and they've just they've, they took that one for free with absolutely no problem. So, oop, my bad. Really nice job there from Carnage. So that's the one advantage that they're milking here is is dragon advantage. So 6-3 at the moment is the kill score. I'll double check again with the CS. We've got 152 for Gangplank, 174 for Caitlyn, 150 for Malzahar, versus 147 for Ezreal, 126 for Vayne, and a 148 for Kennen. So uh, reasonably even here on CS, but uh, all the solos for Carnage are pulling slightly ahead against their respective lane opponents. Um, Malzahar and Ezreal, just about even. Uh, Caitlyn quite a bit up on Vayne, actually, almost 50 CS up, so that, that does matter quite a lot. So two-ish, two and a half champion kills or so. Champion kills worth, I think, roughly 20 minion kills. Don't quote me on that, but it's roughly that. And our cannon, uh, only 10 behind on Gangplank. So, uh, really, pretty much even on CS. Uh, Tarek now with an Oracle's Elixir, they're going to try and get more aggressive. He's got his Heart of Gold, as I, as I predicted. That's generally all the gold pretending need. Ooh, nice down there into Vayne. Shadow coming out. Pelt of a Peacemaker just missing after the tumble. Nice that work. Nice work there from Vayne. Vayne actually now with a BF Sword and Riggle's Lantern. So, there's a little bit more damage, but nowhere near as much as uh, Bloodthirster Caitlyn. He's probably got a Zeal now at this point as well. Right in front of me, yeah, damn. Yeah, she's got a Zeal as well, building up to Phantom Dance. I've got an extra dagger for extra stabby, also known as extra attack speed. I don't know how a dagger gives you attack speed, but whatever. I guess it's light and stuff, you run faster. CS strikes anyone? No? Okay, fine. Whatever. Uh, Caitlyn here gonna assert some lane dominance. Again, Tarek, I think Tarek Caitlyn is a really, really nice lane. I mean, I already mentioned that I think C Caitlyn pretty much card count as Vayne. Um, because Vayne's mobility is negated completely by Yorda Snap Trap, Lee Sin taking a look but not finding anything nice. Tarek again keeping the tribe which there at the bottom river. Warded pretty much a constantly nice uh, power ball in here from Ram. It's going to taunt Lee Sin. Uh, bit of chain CC coming out there but not quite well done. Really nice uh, gangplank out there. Bunging out the choke. Ace and the Hulk coming off. Ezreal flew by, hitting no one. Ace and the Hulk coming out there. Oh, it hit Lee Sin, but he just lived. That was obscene. Ramus, of course, continually powerballing. Flash there from everyone. I think they're probably going to get the... Oh, no, they're just going to be out of range of Lee Sin. Ramus got to be careful now. He's going to take a lot of damage. Defensive ball core going off. Getting up an armor. Sona getting really, really low as well. Caitlyn just shooting people in the head constantly as she does. She's a sniper after all. But no kills, so sadly, after all is said and done. But uh, another advantage there from Carnage. They're going to just keep pushing this lane. So you can definitely see how the farm here is affecting uh, how this lane works. And again, I'm really surprised. Uh, Tarek Vayne is probably the most commonly seen lane against this type of lane. Where you just play super aggressive. But um, they didn't get Tarek, obviously. They got Sona. So I'm guessing Carnage picked, picked Tarek quite highly, knowing uh, how popular he is in uh, the Australian metagame. Which makes for awesome aggressive games, guys. Which is why you should watch Australian LOL, because it's awesome. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, oh, I, I saw a glimmer of red buff. I'm pretty sure Celestial Sora 2 is going to get right out of there. Really, really nice map awareness there. At least in running after him. After Caitlyn, even. But to no avail. Tarot Korean mid doing his thing going back. Malzahar looks like he's going to go top and try and gank Cannon. Definitely gank like a Cannon have been left alone for a while now. I mean, but a uh, bit of a weird build here from Cannon. Looks like he's building Rylize or Rabadon. He's got a blasting one there. 
Actually, you could build. No, we can't build hourglass. Not anymore. You need a chain vest. And uh, Gangplank already finished his Trinity Force, so. Uh, what are the kill scores between those two? As I watched the minimap cautiously, so I don't miss ganks again. Uh, looks like Gangplank has got. Oh, it's 1 on 1 for Gangplank, so, you know, he's playing Terran, no problem. Oh, huge team fight going on in the river. So <laughs> glad I was paying attention. Oracle's now for both teams, so they're gonna probably start to look around Baron and play really aggressively. This is about time in the game. It's actually had a really long landing phase, it's almost 25 minutes into this game. They were landing for a while, but now that the lanes are breaking up, uh, you're going to see more team fighting, more more bigger skirmishes for objectives like Dragon and Baron. Uh, Dragon should be up uh, 2540, as, as my source tells me, so in a minute and a half or so. Dragon will be coming up, and it uh, looks like Carnage is just going to push out here. They think, they think they're stronger, they've got buffs, um, they feel like the, their carry is definitely more farmed than uh, the other team's carry. Gangplank's going to head back top though, you know, because he needs to farm more. As Gangplank does. And uh, of course, can it... Ooh, <laughs> Tarek scared me, I thought that was the enemy. I'm like, oh, okay, then you're gonna die! But no. So just a bit of a Mexican standoff here in mid, as as is always the case in these situations, as you're delivering some nice poke. Um, I think... Looks like Vendetta have the initiation advantage here, so I'll have to see what happens. Uh, nice push on the tower from, I think, all five members of Vendetta here. But Ram is gonna come back for the counter initiation, uh, powerballing over. I'm not sure if his flash is up or not. Nice can them there from Vayne to keep him away. Uh, definitely some nice uh, anti Ramus picks here between Leeson and Vayne. Uh, it's keeping him away, so I really like that. That's really cool. Uh, little resonating strike there from... Actually, what's... is it Sonic Boom? Please don't tell me the move is actually called Sonic Boom. Okay, then a Gangplank fighting it out as well. Gangplank looks like a fancy flash there, but not going to be able to pick up Cannon. And uh, Caitlyn going to head back down bot to do some farming. Well, the three members of uh, Dragon's going to be up soon as well, so I'm going to imagine that Carnage will set up for that. <laughs> be very surprised if they didn't start running there pretty much right away. Um, I guess they're afraid of mid being pushed as well, but we'll have to see. Wow, three-man gank there on a the gangplank who's just going to be able to get away. It's being ignited, final hour, and cannon altered. Looks like those oranges are... Look at, looks like the man's been eating his oranges, because he shouldn't have got away there. And of course, uh, nice counter gank. Nice, yeah, nice counter gank, I suppose, there from from Carnage picking off a, a free member. Looks like top tower's going to go down, but they're going to pressure mid. They don't actually care. I um, actually really like this. This is, um, you know, an inner turret or whatever it's called. Oh, there's no name. Whatever. Yeah, this is like a second turret as opposed to first turret. Gangplank has teleport? Really? Gangplank has teleport. Teleport's top, saves it, no problem. Caden actually soloing dragon because, you know, what a, what's an attack speed debuff? And uh, that was really nice. A free tower there from... Uh, from Carnage, I think they weren't too worried if Top actually went down, because, you know, the landing phase is kind of over already, and uh, looks like Gangplank needs more free farm. He's actually building Warmogs now. What a ball up. <laughs> and uh, again, another free dragon here for here for Carnage, and Caitlyn looks like she pretty much took zero damage doing it with that Bloodthirster, so really nice there. She's actually, yeah, Bloodthirster is ill die. probably going to go back at a Phantom Dancer really, really soon. She's over 200 CS. She is well over 200 CS. 235 for, for Caitlyn. 201 now for Gangplank, and 189. So Cannon actually falling behind. I think he uh, left lane a little bit, for a little bit longer, and Gangplank doing a nice job there. Most definitely. Looks like Carnage actually on a Baron. Wow. This is, this is intense. I guess they are, they're just confident that they can do it. Um, what I think is actually happening is that they're really going to force fight. Ken actually going to see them there. He's going to be like, oh guys, they're doing Baron! Really nice though. I really like this from Carnage here. I think they know they're stronger, definitely. They know Caitlyn, they carry it stronger. Gangplank doing a bit of zoning there. Are they actually going to pick up Baron before Vendetta get here? Ezreal looks like he really wants to steal it. Nice smite there from Rambus. Initiation here coming under Ezreal. Actually, Arcane Shift Simba gets owned. By Malzahar's ultimate, which I can't even remember the name of right now because I'm so damn excited. Cannon gonna run away with a lightning rush. Nice ace in the hole there to pick up Cannon. And that's two kills for nothing and a Baron for Carnage. This push is gonna get intense. And Malzahar's ult is called. It's called Face Laser whenever I play Malzahar, but I don't know if that's the actual name. So we'll go with Face Laser. A nice Face Laser there from Malzahar to pick up pick up Ezreal, despite not getting the, uh, the null void, the pool of goo there, which you just saw. Under him to deal absolutely obscene amounts of damage. Really nice job there. Yeah, really nice job there to uh, <coughs> to pick up to pick up the kill. And uh, yeah, that was an unfortunate arcane shift there for Ezreal, who uh, I think he was probably trying to steal Baron with it actually. But a uh, perfect smite there from Remus. And they're gonna push on this inhibitor turret there. This is uh, actually one of the reasons. Ooh, nice all there from Sony, a little defensive there. But she's so taking a ton of damage there from Caitlyn. Taunt there from Remus coming off. No, no taunts after flashing sadly. But uh, lots of flashes burn there from Vendetta. And kind of looks like they're onto this onto this inhibitor with absolutely no problems at all. That was awesome. <laughs> so yeah, again, that decision from uh, from Carnage to take out the uh, the second tar turret there and mid actually paid off because they wouldn't have got that inhibitor otherwise from that push. Um, it looks like they're going to steal Blue Buff here as well. 
No, it's already down. They already stole it. <laughs> so uh, no stealing. They're gonna push down top tower and just really start taking out uh, these these are uh, you know these outer turrets that probably should have been taken out a while ago. Uh, all five members here clearing out creep waves. Oh, they're from Ezreal. Gonna hit relatively no one and uh, another free turret there from Carnage. Looks like they might even try and engage here. Ramus powballing and I actually really like jungle Ramus in this game. That's something that I would, wouldn't think I didn't think I'd say in competitive play, but uh. Definitely Australian teams like being aggressive, I can tell you that much. And uh, I think Ramos plays into that nicely. What does surprise me is the lack of jungle invasion from Vendetta, and I don't know if that shows just as their uh, potential inexperience of the team. Given that they're ninth on the ladder, I, I highly doubt that Gangplank ult, they're going off in bot to clear out the wave. Gangplank, of course, does everything. And uh, Lee Sin's a really, really strong, uh, really, really strong level 1 champion. Can I clear out blue here? I mean, they didn't... I have like double idea, I just realised. <laughs> So is he going hybrid? No, he's going straight AD. Wow. I totally just realized they were playing double AD. My bad, you guys. This is why This is why no one likes me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so interesting, yeah, double AD strategy coming out from uh, from Vendetta here. That actually makes the Ramus pick make even more sense. And uh, Ramus Tarek is not what you want to have against double AD. So I think Vendetta have been slightly outpicked here. Um, they're going for some sort of, like... Semi AOE with Sonar and Cannon. I mean, they've got a nice team. They do a lot of things. Looks like there's going to be a split push here from a uh, Carnage with two members going, two members going bot, and a pressure here from Ramus, from uh, Tarek and Malta onto mid, which I like. They're definitely keeping the uh, the guys' zone. I think Gangplank and uh, Caitlyn can more than deal with Lee Sin. But in there, nice parlays from Gangplank. Gangplank, of course, has blue buffs. So he's going to spam them out all day. Caitlyn absolutely melting the turret. And uh, another free kill there between uh, the Ramus Malzaha turret combo. And looks like this game's really closing out for Vendetta. Oh, nice ult there from Gangplank to get the kill. Beautiful taunt from Ramus. Asenhal comes out, but isn't needed. Cannon's probably next, but he's going to get away with Lightning Rush. We're going to take down this turret. Take down another inhibitor. And I think this is probably going to be close to game. We've got to watch out there because uh, the Squishies can't tank it. Looks like the Squishies were tanking it for a while. Nice taunt there again from uh, Ramus and uh, into Tarek's done. Oh, wow. Just managed to pick him off. Can I get away with... Oh, no. Sorry. Can I get away with a sliver of health there? My bad. I thought he died. It was a turret that died, not Cannon. And uh, again, a really, really strong push here. Caitlyn just absolutely melting people with all her items there. She's got... She's on to uh, she's on Infinity Edge Bloodthirster Zeal there. So he just, he just skipped the Phantom Dancer and went straight to Infinity Edge. Wow, that Ace in the Hole dealing almost half of Sona's health there in damage. And it looks like uh, kind of going to close this game out. Really, really nice game. 11-3 in the end is a kill score. So, I mean, the team's played great, but I think the Dragon Advantage really snowballed. And yeah, just lots of kills going off. But, uh, there, people are just showing off now when I get kills. Caitlyn picking off everyone. I'm going to get melted in the turret. Tarek tanking a fountain laser like a baller. And GG there. Carnage take a Carnage take Vendetta out in a cyber game. A ladder match. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. A uh, really interesting game. Really aggressive. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope you enjoyed uh, even more of a look into Australian esports. I'll be casting as many games as I can get my hands on. So if you are an awesome Australian esports League of Legends team, especially if you guys are on cyber game, love those guys. Let me know. Contact me in game. I'm Pastry Time. I will say up. I'll try and do a shot cast on one of your games. Anyway, thanks again to Lord Fabulous for providing me with this free play. And uh, GG again for Carnage beating Vendetta uh, quite decisively, 11 to 3 at the end there. Uh, again, I think the Dragon Control and just some really exceptional decision making um, won that game in the end. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. This is Pace Charm signing out. See you guys. Hey, hello everybody. This is Pace Charm. I'm bringing you another shot cast uh, between two more Australian teams. We've got Carnage versus Limited Power. That's Carnage at the bottom. Sorry, Carnage, who were previously Limited Power, my mistake, at the bottom here. Versus Vendetta. This was a cybergamer.com.au ladder match. It was a kind of try. I believe it placed around the mid 20s at the moment. We're playing against Vendetta for who were ninth on the ladder at the time. So not entirely sure how the ladder works exactly, but that's the two teams that were playing against each other. Both are very good teams. Carnage, as I said, were previously limited power. Have changed over. Have changed channels. And um, because they got a new sponsor, guys, guys, and uh, they'll be playing here against Vendetta, as I said. So uh, two uh, reasonably high-ranked ladder teams, Carnage are actually on their way to the National WCG Finals over in Queensland at the EB Expo, which is I think, coming up this weekend. Um, this replay was provided to me by Lord Fabulous, or Lord Fabulous, as I like to call him, he's there on Malzahar. So this should be a good game. Um, I've been promised action, and so hopefully there's action. I'll quickly cast up the lineups while we're here. We've got a... Uh, for for Carnage, we have uh, Gangplank, uh, CJ on Gangplank, Saki on Tarek, Celestial on Caitlyn, Lord Fabulous on Nazahar, and Bisher, or Bisher? Bisher. Bisher on Ramus.
Call them busy, because that's how I roll. Uh, Denmal on Sonar, The Valid on Ezreal, Technicolorful on Vayne, Vertica on Kennen, and Salad Face on Lee Sin. The bands for this game were Brand, Rise, Morgana, and Cassidin. So, so many majors being banned out there. We've ended up with uh, Malzahar and Kennen in the end, uh, given the lack of choices I had. And looks like it'll be Jungle Ramus this time around. So, I haven't seen Jungle Ramus in a very long time. Um, I'm interested to see how this is going. Looks like Caitlyn's actually going mid. There is a chance she's just trapping up mid for a. Uh, for Malzahar though, that's probably what's going to happen, looks like Gangplank's heading top. Uh, they did kind of poke into their own brush there, see if they were going to get invaded at all, but looks like Carnage are, are perfectly safe. And there's uh, no invasion that's going to happen. I'm just going to turn down my scroll speed real quick. I know I do have some observational skills to work on. Oh, uh, turn it all the way down. There we go, alrighty. There we go, so Ramus here is going to start at Wolves. Pick them up quickly, and then uh, probably go along here and get a leech from his blue. He's actually going to... Oh! He attempts to finish. Wolves forgets about the last one. Ends up finishing him anyway. Started with a cloth armor and a uh, bunch of health bots. And looks like four mem uh, three members of his team are going to be helping him push here. Really, really nice leech there. Oh, I like that. The stun from Tarek to, uh, to help out the leeching. That's that's really shiny. I like that. So Ramus is going to go get his blue. He's got it already. And we'll see what he does there. So it's going to be Ezreal versus Malzahar in mid. That's interesting. Finally have a carry mid. Kennen's actually gone top against Gangplank. And it's going to be Vayne Tarek. Oh my god, Tarek getting absolutely melted by Vayne. That was a nice condemned combo there. Looks like Lee Sin had jumped down from a... Uh, jumped down from bot. And uh, poor Tarek, as, as he went to go down through blue, um, managed to get picked up by Vayne and Lee Sin. And Lee Sin probably started at Golems, went to level 2 gank, and... Ta-da! I found a Tarek to kill. So that was vicious. That Tarek got absolutely melted. So... Uh, the early lead here for Vendetta. Uh, it's going to be Sona Vayne versus Caitlyn Tarek. So, uh, Vayne and Caitlyn, pretty much uh, the most two most popular carriers at the moment. Um, at least in the at least in the Australian metagame. I know a lot of the the US players like uh, Cogwa and stuff like that. They like uh, uh, other carriers. Actually, not a whole lot of Vayne, but Vayne and Caitlyn are pretty much the uh, two carriers that I've I've seen dominating Australian games and Australian tournaments. Um, ever since I've started uh, really focusing on watching them. Uh, just as a quick thing, if, you, if you're an Aussie team, please uh, try and contact me. You can just add me in game at Pastry Time and uh, give, give me a track because I'd love to cast a replays. Um, I've been casting some of Frenetic Rose games, a few of which I'm st I've still got to put up. And uh, this is, of course, uh, Carnage as well, another really great Australian team who are also going to the WCG finals. So, um, yeah, in Queensland, which is, again, uh, this coming weekend, I believe. So yeah, um, I'd love to cast more Australian games. I think uh, I think they're awesome. And hopefully, I was promised action, so hopefully it's action action abroad. Looks like Cannon and Gangplank there having some having some fun. Nothing too crazy going on. Again, I'm casting from low replay, so without any uh, health bars, it's kind of hard to see what's going on. Remus uh, going to do his jungle here. Looks like he might be trying to gank Cannon. Little Cannon could be in trouble over here. Cannon, oh, I think he might have been clairvoyance there, and he's he's just gonna walk away. Anyway, looks like he might be coming towards mid now. Ramus probably really wants to gank off. He's he's got his buffs. He's ready to go. And no, uh, he's just he's just gonna go around the map, do his thing, take some more creeps. Back down in bot lane here again. Terry Caitlin, Vayne Sona. So that's what I was talking about. Um, basically, it's two poke heavy, uh, burst oriented carries that we're seeing in bot lane. So. Uh, the Aussie team seem to have come to the conclusion: well, the best way to win in this lane is to have a high high burst damage uh, combos in duo, uh, combos in bot lane, and uh, go in them from there. Now, Vayne and Caitlyn on their own are actually perfectly fine carries. Oh, it looks like Gangplank's getting ganked there. Just managing to get away from Lee Sin. Sorry, I kind of missed that one. I was talking about, but I was talking about duo lanes, and then Gangplank was going to get killed. Looks like he's he's got out there. I don't know how much health he has, but uh, he's eating some oranges. He looks like he'll be okay. And uh, given that he's staying in the lane, he kind of kind of taken too much. So uh, he might that have been a clutch clairvoyance there. We'll have to see. Cannon's walking up there. Oh, and of course, Ezreal kills Malzahar while I'm watching. Ah, but does die in the process. That's a nice uh, tower dive there from Ezreal. They do trade kills, which is not always the best thing. But uh, uh, and Ezreal, of course, types worth it in chat. So it was worth it. Ramus and Lee Sin here gonna gonna face off mid. Lee Sin doesn't actually have red. Don't, don't know how low he is, but Ramus might be able to get a kill here. Oh, looks like he misses the taunt, the defensive ball core going off, but, uh, no. No such luck for Ramus. They're just gonna, uh, do a little dance in mid. Back in bot here, looks like Caitlyn, uh, Caitlyn and Tarek have done a good job harassing Vayne there. She's down to below half health. Uh, Cerner trying to heal her up as best she can, but of course Cerner's healed, are uh, not all that great, but, uh, you can cast it a lot, but it's for a low amount, so eventually you'll heal your carry back up to full, but it'll take a while. Looks like Vayne's actually sculled some potions. She actually started with boots and three pots, and, uh... 
Caitlin. I kind of see. Oh, so I don't start in front of me because it's. I'm um, from Caitlyn's perspective. I actually started with Doran's Blade, so definitely the early harassment advantage going to attack Caitlyn, which you'd expect anyway, given that uh, Tarek can just walk up and stun stun Shadow Combo, and then Caitlyn just shoots him in the head. If you've got a headshot going, or if you snare them for a peel type of peacemaker, it's just it's brutal. Uh, there's definitely a Tarek stun into Caitlyn Trap was a really popular one. I think the change to Tarek's stun, it wasn't really a nerf, it was more just they rounded the duration to just uh, 1.5 seconds instead of between 1 and 2, depending on range. Now it's only the damage that gets affected by range, but um, with that change, I'm not sure if the uh, the Yordle Snap Trap stun combo works, and we'll have to see. But um, certainly Tara Caitlyn is still very powerful, and Caitlyn has tons of early damage. The stun going out to Sony, but nothing happening. Tumble there from Vayne to get some last hits going. But yeah, Caitlyn's uh, range and her early damage with Pilt of a Peacemaker really does make her quite a strong early game champion. And she, if you're not prepared to deal with Caitlyn, she absolutely she wrecks some serious face. <laughs> She will do damage, and uh, she's not bad late game either. They buffed her attack speed a very long time ago um, to kind of make her to scale her to make her scale a little bit better. And we have, you have enough attack speed and some good idea items. Looks like Ram is creeping in here for a brush kink, by the way. But yeah, your headshots will start uh, start owning people. So Ramus uh, has snuck into the brush here. For those of you who don't know how this works, basically you uh, push the lane until all the brush is clear. Then you come in from the top of the lane, like where the turret is. You walk into the brush and you wait for them to you push and you wait for them to push back or go on you. And then begin your gank. Ramus is probably quite good at this, given that his taunt is such a such a good form of CC. Um, <laughs> they're really waiting for Senator to walk a little bit closer. Of course, if there's a ward in that bush, which there isn't, or if um CV goes down, then the jigs up. Oh, looks like there's a CV there from Senator, but I don't think it went. Looks like it went top. So I think Ramus is still safe. He's of course wasting a lot of time and actually leeching experience as well. So if you don't get a uh, if you don't get a gank, it's uh, it's not all that great, but it can take a while, especially, I mean, they've been aggressive in this lane for so long, I don't think that uh, Vendetta are going to get baited into it, but we'll have to see. <laughs> Ramus, playing like Garen, really dedicated to the brush kills. Ooh, looks like they g oh, they're pushing a little bit closer, the opportunity is going to come soon, and in before this lane gets absolutely destroyed. Oh, Ramus really wants to go, and there's a nice stun there. Beautiful taunt, oh, and a nice flash from Vayne, gank like ult coming out as well, to try and help out the gank. That would have definitely been a kill without the flash there, but Vayne, absolutely uh, perfect flash, uh, flashing completely past the range of Gangplank's ultimate, and uh, that gank's over. So, nice attempt there from uh, from Carnage, but sadly, no dice. Tarek looks like he's going to go back and ward the tribush down there. A good spot to ward, most certainly. Although, uh, if you're clever, junglers can sneak in up here, down the river. If you hug the wall the entire time, you can just sit in, uh, sit in this bush here. Anyway, it's a nice attempt there. It's uh, now one kill to two in favor of Vendetta at this moment. So, uh, you know, there is some action. Looks like Lee Sin's poking his head in mid there, but uh, Malzahar, who's got a ward there, is going to quickly spot him. He's actually got a ward in the brush that he's standing in, so it looks like there's going to absolutely be no gank there for uh, for Carnage. Oh, sorry, for Vendetta. Man, one word team names. So tricky. Looks like Lee Sin might be trying to counter jungle here, but I think Ramus has spotted him. Ooh, that looks like they're hunting him down. I think they know he's going to be there. Yep, they found him. It was a nice CV that Ram's going to power block. Gangplank coming in too, and Malzahar. Malzahar's ult up as well, so this could be absolutely brutal. Kenna coming in as well, but it is a 3v2. An ult there coming out on uh, Lee Sin. Not sure how much damage he's taking. Ooh, a nice ult there from Ezreal. Gangplank going to pick up the kill on Lee Sin though. And uh, no members of Carnage died, so a uh, nice gank there to even up 2-2. Even up and uh, looks like everyone's going to get out reasonably happy and healthy. Uh, I did like the ult there from uh, Ezreal, you know, trying to make the best of a bad situation, but sadly it was not enough, and uh, it was a f nice kill there, and really, really good coordination, and a good spot there from from uh, from Carnage, realising that he would probably go up in counter jungle and trying to find him. So a little bit sloppy there from Vendetta, I mean, Lee Sin definitely know. Oh, uh, actually, maybe he didn't, I thought he got CV'd, but maybe he didn't. If he didn't, then it's not his fault, but um, anyway, we'll see. That was unfortunate, to say the least, but that's what ward coverage does for you guys. Ward, ward your map, it's good for you. Sometimes you get free kills. So again, the Tarek Caitlyn continuing, continuing their game at bottom there. I think with that that brush gank, they're actually probably going to do even better pushing now. Caitlyn, of course, laying traps around everywhere. So poor Vayne, who's known uh, known very well for her mobility with tumble and of course her ultimate, uh, really gets owned by Caitlyn. I'm actually surprised that Caitlyn and Vayne are such common, such common carries, given that Caitlyn just rails Vayne in the early game for the most part. I mean, I think we mostly see. Uh, we often see Vayne Peg with a healer, so you'd probably never see Vayne Janna. But all the all the four other main supports, Soraka, Alistar, uh, Tarek, and Sona, all have a, a reasonable heal. So, Of course, Soraka has a great heal. But yeah, they all have a decent, good healing. But they can at least sustain, if nothing else. So, 
They do a good job there. Looks like another gank on top there. I think Ramus tried to go in for it and didn't get it. He's nice taunt there into Cannon. Gangplank take, uh, gangplank doing tons of damage. Polly they come out with the slow. Tremor's going off as well. Ramus ultimate, but uh... Oh, there is gonna be a kill. Ramus finally picks it off, I think, with an auto attack. Nice job there. I think, uh, Cannon thought he was safe after Ramus's initial gank failed, and... Which is, I think, a lot I saw at top. Oh! And, of course, the scuffle in mid happens, and, uh... Mazaha gets the better of that one with his catalyst. Looks like Ezreal had a... Uh, Ezreal had Riggles Latin. That's a really interesting item. And I think... I don't actually like carries in mid for that... Especially against Mages with Bursi as Malzahar. For that reason, is that you're really squishy and you're just going to get melted. Um, I don't know how Ezreal got away with the first kill. I'm probably just playing really aggressively. But uh, I think is definitely going to start winning this lane as he gets more and more items and his burst goes up. I'm not entirely sure what his runes are. Um, I think that's actually just a reasonable amount of AP. He has 25 with no other AP items. So, um, yeah, reasonably offensive, but, you know, you can get crazier than that most certainly. have to see if his AP goes up next level. What, he's level 6 now? Level 8 now, okay. See if it goes up after level 8. Do some rune investigation. Tarek again, uh, continually warding a bit of brush there. They do see Lee Sin poke into... Poke in, poke in the top of the jungle, but they'll have a ward there in case he tries to come down. They've also got a uh, dragon ward as well, so that gives you enough coverage of uh, the bottom river. You should be safe there. Ramus, ah, oh, and Ramus of course warding up here as well, another really good spot. You can see people coming uh, into mid here from their side of the jungle, and also... Oh! Tarek's... Lee Sin's gonna catch Tarek there. He's gonna get stunned, he's gonna jump onto him, slow him there with the Tempest. Caitlyn probably gonna try and slow him here. Stunned there with a beautiful ult. Oh, nice counter flash there from Tarek getting out of Sun Rolled. And flash is going for a heal again from Tarek. Really nice reflexes from uh, from Carnage players here. Ooh, that was nice. I think Ramus got kicked away. That was awesome, <laughs> if that's what happened. I think Ramus got kicked away from Lee, by Lee Sin. And, uh prevent the taunt. I think that's what happened. That's awesome. But uh, Kainichi kind of are going to take their advantage, realizing that they're scared, and uh, do Dragon, which is a uh, really, really nice, really good awareness there from Kainichi. It, it takes balls to do Dragon when uh, the entire enemy team is up, but uh, they realize that they're probably not going to come for them, and they're going to take Dragon in about 13 minutes. Should see it again then in about 19 minutes, of course. Dragon with a six-minute timer, 18.55, sacking, Saki writing down the time for me. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> and uh, the game will continue on. Gangplank and Kennen still fighting each other, I think... I think I like Gangplank. I mean, Kennen's reasonably tanky, and he's got a he's got a Hextech revolver here, so he's gonna try and uh, gonna do the best he can. Oh, oh, they're coming! <laughs> he's gonna try and kill Gangplank, but he flashes away. Uh, no dice there, sadly, for Kennen. 